Hello friends in Northwestern, Northeastern United States, friends in Canada. This is Reefer Gill coming at you from California looking at a temperature of 73 degrees, the sun just set, and we're looking at highs in the low 80s by Sunday. Let's get started with this video. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here bringing you an update video since the last update that we've done a few months ago. Before we get started, I wanted to take the time to thank all of you for the tremendous amount of support that you've been showing the channel. Over the last few months, my subscribers have been climbing. I'm reaching that milestone of 3,000 subscribers, which I hope to hit pretty soon. So thank you very, very much for all those who are new to the channel, and a big thank you to those who have been subscribed to my channel since the very beginning. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and we'll get you on board here. Believe it or not, I am starting a blog page on Thomas Vision Reef. The link will be down below. The blog page consists of several reefers in variety levels of experience and they will all have specific topics that they'll be discussing on their blog. So check it out. The link is down below. It's run by Thomas Brown who has a YouTube channel himself. He's very educational and actually very entertaining as well. If you have not subscribed to Thomas Brown, uh, go ahead and do so. I really hi highly recommend his channel. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the updates of the system. We'll go over the corals. I did add an MP10 over to the uh, right side here and that replaced the Corellia that was there before. And then I added a new sump and then we'll go over all the new additions as we take the tour around the, the tank and the sump area. Okay, I'm gonna start off from left to right. I'm gonna go kind of fast because we're also incorporating the sump area in this video and I don't want it to be too long. But here is the purple stylo. You can just see how large this thing is. One of my favorite corals in the system. I've had them for a very, very long time. Started off with only a couple of fingers on it and now you can see how just much it's grown. It's getting close to the glass though because every time I run the magnetic cleaner by it, it's starting to touch it so I gotta frag it pretty soon. This is a Sunset Monty, orange with green. You can see that the ball of it, that's where it came with the frag plug and then the skirt around it. That's all new growth onto the existing rock that I had, but really pretty. A pink stylo I guess. Kind of chilling at the bottom here. My orange recordia, it's got at least three green mouths on it, but it looks like one solid body. So hopefully that's gonna be splitting pretty soon. My dandros are doing good. Each head has grown. However, no new heads have grown since I've had it in the system. And then this is a mushroom colony that kind of started taking off, which is an, actually in a perfect spot because it's right on the cliff part of the aqu uh, aquascape and I wouldn't be able to put some SPS corals there anyway so it's a perfect spot for these mushrooms to grow adds a nice splash of color to the system. Right above that I have a green acro and then another SPS here with the green trunk but the camera's not really picking it up really pretty. My blue tort is doing great I've had him about three months and he's doing great. I'm dosing the tank with some Zeovet supplements and I think that's why I'm able to keep this blue tort in the system because I never had success with blue SPS corals until now. Orange Satosa here. A really unique colored, green colored uh, SPS or Acro right here. Had him in the system for a while. I forgot to showcase him in the last update. Looks more there, there's a green right there on the right. You can kind of see it. And then a green stylo here. He's a little guy. If a snail hits him just right, the branch will fall off. Um, and there's a branch right in the crevice of a rock. That's starting to grow out. That's right above the snail. Um, so I'm just going to let it grow out. And then we have a sour apple Monty on the left here. There's actually two of them on that side. My blah coral, that's what I call him, because he has real no color to no color to him or anything, so he's kind of existing. And then I have a burgundy 
I think it's a stylo and then a green milli in the middle of the three and then I have another green uh, acro in the back there an orange digi here this is not the same orange digi that was in the last update video for some reason that one didn't make it so I purchased a new one my strawberry shortcake he's doing great really pretty colors on this guy burgundy with green um, another favorite coral of mine and then this green acro in the back supposedly wild caught if you look at my last video you'll see how much this guy's grown all the branches on the right side here all the skinnier ones those are all brand new uh, branches that have grown out since the last video some four or five months ago Did I catch my breath here and then we have a burgundy kind of stylish coral here and it's kind of growing more of like a bush side to side and you get to see all the white tips on it doing very well in the system here's my unknown named kind of ice green coral really cool uh, you can see it's encrusted on the rock to the left and above it and this coral here is fairly new to the system and it's changed its color quite a bit it was kind of block color in the LFS but now it's turning more purple with a little hint of green in it. It could potentially turn out to be one of my favorite corals in the system. We'll see how he grows out. And then up here we have a blue stag. He's doing very, very well. He did start to bleach out a little bit and now that area's got covered up by kind of a brown film and now it's all blue again. So he's doing very well. Again, the Zeovit uh, supplements that I'm introducing into the system uh, is given all the credit for the blue colors to be able to hang out with me. Another orange Satosa here that's encrusting on the rocks all over it. Colony of green mushrooms. My toadstool doing great. Every once in a while the toadstool, the plate of it, not the polyps, but just the plate will turn green. You can kind of see a hint of the green right here on the edge. And then other days it's just kind of this brown color, so I don't know uh, what causes it to turn the different colors but when it's green it's really really cool uh, my bright orange frog spawn the centerpiece of the system and it's rightful place doing great very very healthy I have three clams now so the clam on the right is the original one I kind of tested out to see if I'd be able to keep a clam because I didn't have very good success in the very beginning and once I felt confident that I was able to keep the clams healthy, I went out and bought the second one here. It's a nice bright blue colored clam. And then the LFS actually gave me this guy who was very, very sad in their system. And he's bounced back a lot. He's a lot happier, a lot healthier. He does not have a foot on him. So every once in a while he'll fall over to the side and I have to pick him up and face him up toward the light. But he's doing great. All three of them are doing great. They're all fed with uh, Fido Feast and then here's uh, another kind of centerpiece of the system my two Montes the orange cap Monty I'm constantly fragging him out you can see the frags right here but I'm constantly fragging him out because he's growing so fast in the system uh, not annoying not in an annoying way because they're easy to frag you just kind of break them off off the edges there and uh, take it to the LFS or swap them out if you're involved in any kind of reef club and then the green Monty, that guy just surprised me. He was the Monty that was glued onto the magnetic, uh, on the magnets that were on the back of the glass, if you remember my earlier videos, and decided to take him off the magnet and put him next to the other Monty Pora here so that they kind of grow into each other. And I'm glad I did that because they look great together. Those two colors um, just pop. And then we have our zoanthid garden, doing very, very well. Finally got my hands on some blue zoos. I've been looking for those for a long time and they're coloring up very, very nicely. These polyps are really nice too, large polyps here. The burgundy and green centers and, and these polyps up there are really cool with orange and green as well, bright orange. And then we have the Duncan here, which is doing great. I don't know how many more heads it's got, I haven't counted them. 
but he's doing very, very good. And then this is probably the ugliest rose bubble tip anemone you'll ever lay your eyes on. But it's mine and it belongs to my two clownfish that are doing really, really well. And um, we're going to keep it, but I just want to see, show you guys how ugly he is. And then uh, from here, we'll move on to the fish. Probably be the last time you see the green Nethia coral in my system. If you look back at other videos, you'll be able to see the difference in size between then and now. It's a really pretty coral, guys. I just think it's not a, quite the fit that I want for my system. I have a little bit too much green going on, so I want to utilize the area that the Nethia is on to give the tank a little bit different color splash. These are known to expel toxins as a defense mechanism but in the year that I've had him I don't think he's ever done that you can see he's almost touching other corals and nothing seems to be bothered by him very nice coral just uh, don't think it's a fit for my system here for the look that I'm trying to achieve here's a look at my purple tang when he comes around I'll show you what's going on with his mouth he's got this white almost looks like a saber tooth tiger tooth coming from the top of his lip to the bottom it's bright white, you can see it right there. I'm not sure if it's an injury, a tumor, or a parasite. Definitely not ick. He just came down with this within the last couple days. He's going after food. Whether or not that food's actually making it in his mouth is another question because it's hard to tell with that growth on his mouth or lip if uh, he's actually taking in food. But I'm gonna keep a close eye on him. I'm gonna do some research and figure out what that could possibly be. Hopefully it'll pass and he'll be fine. I'll keep you guys updated on his progress, but there it is. If you guys have ever seen something like this on a tang or any other fish, uh, leave a comment down below. Here's my purple tang. Whatever it was that was hanging off the top of his mouth is gone, so I'm just wondering, maybe he just picked something up off the sand and kind of stuck on his lip, but you can see he's very healthy. No signs of any issues with his mouth. So that is a major relief since he's the most expensive fish in here. My Melanaris wrasse, you can tell he's a male because he doesn't have that black dot on the back where females do. My Model Citizen Flame Angel, doing very, very well. My Starry Blenny, picking away at the rocks there. One of three Antheus that I have, all three of them are still female. I'm hoping they turn, or that one turns into a male. My black and white clowns, there's the female and the male is on the left, doing very well. Also have a whole bunch of cleanup crew members. You can see a brittle starfish leg kind of sticking out right there. I have three of them. Uh, one of them is bright orange. And then I wanted to share with you guys, going back to this purple stylo, you can see that the polyps are nice and full kind of looks like fur on it. Well, the top of it was bald for like a week. Clearly, somebody was picking at it. And of course, my first thought was the flame angel because they are known to pick at corals. And one night I woke up and I found the culprit red-handed with his hand in the cookie jar. And that was my peppermint shrimp. My peppermint shrimp was on top of there and picking up the polyps and eating it. So the peppermint shrimp has uh, disappeared. I don't know how, but he is no longer in the system. At least I haven't seen him. And if he is, I am trying to keep the tank fed at night by putting some food in the system, specifically targeting the middle of the rocks here, just in case he is in there. The, the shrimp that I'm talking about, the peppermint shrimp, they're very, very shy shrimp so he may still be in there um, but I'm not sure I haven't seen him here's my coralline algae algae you know the word algae I can't even pronounce it I have a tough time pronouncing that word uh, but our friends in Europe I think they got, they're onto something here because they pronounce it algae and I think from this point on I'm gonna pronounce it algae because you have coralline algae green hair algae brown hair algae, you have diatom algae, you have cyanobacteria algae, even though cyano is not really an algae. Algae is so much more fun to say and it's easy 
So from this point on, if you hear me pronounce it algae, it's because I don't know how to pronounce it the English way. And I don't even know how to spell algae. If it's, is it still spelled the same way? It doesn't matter. But I got algae in the display tank. I got algae in the sump area. I got algae all up in this. Okay guys, I apologize for that outburst. I am back to center and refocused on doing this. For those of you who are new to the channel, I did do a sump swap about two months ago. I swapped out a Proflex 3 sump with this Ruby 36 sump. Everything's doing very, very well. I added a new skimmer to the system as well as a dual reactor. I do have a video out on that, so if you'd like to check it out, just go to my channel and flip through the videos until you see the sump video there. The one thing I do want to show you guys on the sump here is the cyano that's growing in the refugium area. That was to be expected because I did disrupt the system by changing out the sump and then replenishing the miracle mud, removing about 50% of it. I actually probably removed more like 70% of it and replacing it with new mud. So that did cause a little disruption in the system. As a result, I triggered some cyano to start growing in the refugium area that I siphon out once a week or so. I am going to do a full top to bottom review of my entire system and what keeps it working especially with the automated controllers and dosing. But for this purpose, for this video, I'm just going to go over the refugium area to show you the cyano that I'm talking about. You can see it right on top of the Chetomorpha and then you can see more cyano on the rocks down below. Not a big deal because it's not in the display tank but I am keeping an eye on it. The Chato itself isn't really growing all that much and um, I'm not sure if the light itself is to blame because I also switched that out to this Phoenix 12 inch LED blue and white light. But I think it's more to do with the fact that I swapped out the sump and disrupted the, the stability of the system at the time. You can see some coralline algae growing there, which is a good, <coughs> excuse me, a good sign. But other than that, the system is running well. Um, I will do that top to bottom review on the entire system very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Again, thank you all for the tremendous amount of support that you've been showing the channel. Many more videos to come. Please don't forget to comment down below. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, show your support. Also, reminder to please visit that blog page I mentioned early on in the video and support that page that was made by Thomas Brown himself. Thank you all for watching and we will see you all next time.